17th. This is episode one of Control Talk. I'm your host, Eric Stromquist, and today we have a very special guest, Vern Peterson from MOB Training. Vern, welcome. Thank you. So tell us about MOB Training. Well, uh, I'm kind of a one-man training show. I uh, travel around the country. I teach classes on several different product lines. I teach on the Honeywell XL5000 system. I do three levels of care training, and I teach on XBS and symmetry. Uh, I've also done a lot of training on Honeywell's LCBS product line. I do a couple of different uh, levels of training on lawn spec, and uh, developed a CBT or computer-based training package on the lawn station uh, product offering. A few years ago, I started doing some training on the Niagara product. Uh, with Honeywell's encouragement and support and intervention, I approached Tritium to uh, see if I could become part of their training organization. And uh, it took me 11 months to convince them to let me become part of their certification program. But after that 11 months, they finally relented. And uh, last I heard, uh, the training manager from Tritium, Gerard Huff, told me that I was training and certifying more people on the Niagara product than all of the other independent training organizations combined. Wow. Almost twice as much. Well, I know in our particular case, uh, every time we bring you here, the class is full. We've got a full class down, downstairs in the training room right now. We had a full class last week. And you actually offer two levels of training. You, you offer the basic certification and an advanced training class. Right. I do a, a second level of training class that deals primarily with configuring the field bus controllers. In the certification class, we concentrate on building a Niagara station. And although we do a lawn integration and a backland integration, we really don't talk much about the controllers on those networks. In the level two class, I kind of focus on the controllers and less on the station. And that helps you, uh, helps the student kind of develop the, uh, a well-rounded uh, level of knowledge so they can approach a real job and accomplish it with greater success. Nice, nice. How did you get into training? Well, uh, in 1984, I was hired by Honeywell to work as an instructor in their professional development center. Uh, a friend of mine recommended that I look for that job because he thought I might be good at it. And uh, I worked for Honeywell 22 months full time. They laid me off and then hired me back as a contract trainer a few months later. And uh, I worked for them exclusively as a contract trainer until around 1996. Uh, I continued to teach classes I had taught for them when I was a full time instructor and that was primarily pneumatic controls classes and mechanical systems classes, chillers, boilers, things like that. And uh, as part of my uh, working with Honeywell, they asked me to become an, an instructor on the XL5000 system, and that was when I first started getting into DDC controls. And, and now, I don't work so much with the Honeywell Training Center anymore, although I still know the people that work there, and, and I consider them to be good friends. Uh, they do a great job of training, and uh, they give me support when I ask for it. I give them support if they ask for it. Um, primarily now I, I work with the product managers at Honeywell that support the products that I do training classes on. And of course I work uh, closely with Tritium uh, and I'm in contact with the Tritium training people on a regular basis to make sure that I'm presenting the right information in the order that they wanted to presented in. Been a Honeywell dealer since day one, and I remember the W7600 days, I remember the CARE uh, days, and the XL5000 days, and you know, now we're at uh, Tritium and Lawn and all that good stuff. So speak a little bit to our viewers, uh, if you would, about, about uh, the changes, and, and keeping in mind that some of our viewers are end users, owners, building owners, some consulting engineers, and you know, a lot of them are obviously contractors. Yeah. Um. <laughs> When you asked that, I was thinking about uh, a meeting that I attended at Honeywell in 1984. Basically, they were announcing the introduction of two new products. Uh, the brand new high technology plastic RP920 receiver control <laughs> to replace the old, I still call it the new controller, even though it was introduced in 1984. And they were also talking about some strange animal called the DDC controller. And they, were, they named it the XL controller. It's now called the XL Classic Controller. But I remember uh, listening to uh, the, the guy who was presenting on the XL Controller talk about what it could do, and I watched him write a, a line of, of code on the whiteboard in Rackle. And mm -hmm. I thought, 
that's not going to work out because calibrating to eight pounds of branch line pressure or writing this big long computer code, what's the average guy in the job site going to want to do? You're going to stay with the pneumatics, yeah. And so I figured, you know, pneumatics would be around forever and it probably will be, but there's obviously been a very dramatic change from uh, commercial buildings, especially large buildings, focusing on using pneumatic controls to using DEC. Um, basically what that's meant for contractors is they've gone from a relatively simple process and set of controls to not only having to understand the mechanicals like you know, how, how a chiller works and, and how you have to control capacity. Uh, we now have to be uh, IT guys. We have to know computers inside and out. It makes our, our jobs a lot more complicated. But um, the guys I've worked with have, have stepped up and they really understand that well. Um, I went from dealing primarily with teaching guys how to work with pneumatic controls to dealing with guys who have very little experience and know nothing about pneumatic controls. There's still a lot of pneumatic controls out there, but there doesn't seem to be a lot of training or emphasis on selling pneumatic controls as a product. Basically, everything's been replaced by DEC or will be. Right. Um, there's, uh, there's a lot of move towards centralization, being able to monitor an entire building from a central location. And uh, with pneumatics, although that was possible, it was kind of difficult to yeah. do. Yeah. And a lot of maintenance on that. You have to time to calibrate. And then so with the DDC, it seems like when the advent of that came along, everybody had the proprietary protocol, meaning if you had a Johnson system that talked the Johnson language, Honeywell talked CBUS, uh, everybody had their language. So as an owner, you were pretty much locked into whoever won on bid day. But but that sort of has completely changed with, with Tritium and open systems. Speak a bit about that and how that works. Yeah, the, the concept of, of open communication between different manufacturers and controllers is something that's been talked about for quite a while now and been kind of pushed by uh, primarily, at least initially, by ASHRAE. But uh, the, the introduction of DDC controls on a proprietary communication protocol was pretty much expected that was you know everybody's developing their own stuff there was no concept of standardization at the time um, as building owners became uh, aware that if they bought from a particular company that they were locked into that company they didn't like that and I know of installations where the entire control system was removed because of a falling out between the manufacturer and the owner and of course that isn't a good deal and, and it became hard to integrate one product with another if a new thing came out, it was the hottest thing. You really couldn't go with it. Um, different methods of becoming open have been uh, explored. Uh, and one of those methods is to take a, a communication protocol, proprietary or what might be considered open, like LON or BACnet, and move that data into uh, an object or a controller that can understand both or multiple com communication languages. And that's where Niagara really shines. Uh, the ability to integrate different communication protocols into a Niagara station is not only very easy to do, it really works. Yeah, it does. <laughs> and that's what, you know, I've been involved with Niagara for multiple years now, and it still amazes me that it works as well as it does. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's almost easy. Yeah. It's almost predictably going to work. And, okay. and that's just a really cool thing for the owners. I think that also explains why, you know, we bring you down here twice a year and your classes fill up like that. Yeah. And, uh, and you know, it's pretty impressive. We'll, we'll, show, we'll show them footage of your classes now, sort of, of, of uh, how, you know, you got the computer stations, they're working, they're doing the hands-on. Yeah. It is truly a certification class where yeah. they have to pass a test on which Friday, which will be tomorrow. Yeah. They don't pass the test, they don't get the certification, they can't buy the product. Yeah. So I think that's another big plus with the Tritium. I mean, they're, yeah. they're really rigorous about making sure really good trainers like you train customers and that the customers actually come up to a certain standard before yeah. they're able to, to purchase the product. Yeah, they have to prove a base level of competency by passing that test. And, um, and they'll learn a lot about the product that after they're done and they start doing their jobs. That's one of the things that is almost to me as a trainer, a little bit scary. The amount of information that I present in four days to the guys in the certification class is uh, quite comprehensive. It's almost a little too much. Yeah. But um, a as that is, it is still just touching the surface of what the product can do. Uh, it's very, very versatile, very configurable. It can do virtually anything you want. Yes. Um, 
it's primarily being applied at this point in time in HVAC type markets, but Tritium is developing product to focus on industrial applications. They have a security application. They've got uh, special uh, applications that can be used for power demand control and power monitoring. And they're covering all the bases and all of it is integrated with all of the rest of it. Yeah. And that's just, it's really a cool deal. It's really a solution for everything in the building. Gives, a, gives an owner a single seated control. You have one computer, one software package, yeah. and, and look at everything from the security to his energy monitoring to his energy control. Yeah. And then there are different levels of it too because he can also, uh, the guy in the, the maintenance shop can look at what he wants to look at. You can customize the field for the, for the building owner so you can look at it. that have different responsibilities and different levels of competency. Yeah. Yes. You, know, you get that guy that you don't want him to be in charge of the chiller in case he puts a point in the wrong state or something like that, but you can lock that out so he can't do that. Yeah. And you can control exactly what he sees when he signs onto the station. And one of the things that I think is really cool about it too is the ability to connect up to the station over the internet. Um, if, if the JACE is made available publicly like that, you can, uh, as a contractor or as a building owner, you can actually connect to the station running inside the building and if you have the proper permissions, you can actually reprogram processes and everything from over the internet. Yeah, anywhere in the world. Anywhere in the world. I think it gives a whole other level of support too, meaning that, that a distributor like Strongquest or one of our you know Honeywell distributors in Controls Group North America, if they got a job that's out there instead of necessarily having to send a control tech to the job, if they get access, yeah. you know, they can look in and, and hopefully correct the problems. But but I think the one common denominator with all this, Burn, is is the training. You're only as good as the training you get. The product is solid. And I think that's where you really shine, and MOB training really shines is, is, is with the training. You got yes. you do you do a fantastic job. How many weeks of the year? How many weeks of the year are you on the road uh, traveling doing classes? Well, last time I counted, which was a couple of years yeah. ago, I had been out of town about 32 weeks in yeah. the year. And then a lot of the weeks that I'm not traveling, I'm teaching at my home base, which is in Minnesota. Yeah. And uh, once in a while, I actually take a week off. <laughs> um, like next week, I'm going to take off, but that's few and far between. <laughs> Let's just put this in perspective. Bon Jovi, the Rolling Stones, <laughs> none of those rock stars travel as, <laughs> as much as Vern does. Vern is actually the rock star of the HVAC <laughs> industry with the training. Wow. So Vern, tell, tell our listeners and our viewers how, um, how to find out about your training and your schedule. Well, I have a website, movtraining.com, mm -hmm. and you, you can go there anytime you want, and you can check out my schedule, and you can register for classes there. I have classes uh, listed there uh, that are scheduled all around the country, and the, um, the majority of my classes are sponsored by organizations like Strongquist around the country, but I do sponsor some classes on my own. I do uh, customized training for individual end users on occasion. Uh, I've even done classes where the entire class was me sitting with the contractors at a location and helping them program a job in order to uh, kind of combine getting the job done and learning at the same time. That'd be a great way to do it, wouldn't it? I enjoy that. Yeah. It's yeah. a challenge. Yeah, absolutely. Well, there you have it. Vern Peterson from MOB Training, the rock star of DDC <laughs> Training. If you think Tritium or you think Honeywell, you need to think Vern Peterson. Vern, thanks so much. Thank you. Hi, I'm Eric Stromquist. And I'm David Stromquist. Stromquist & Company is an industry-leading distributor of commercial and industrial HVAC control. Our father founded the company in 1952. His success is built purely on customer satisfaction. He believed in hiring extraordinary people and empowering them to take outstanding care of his customers. Now my brother and I are committed to providing our customers with great products and great service. With over $2 million of inventory between our Georgia and Florida locations, an easy-to-use online ordering platform, same-day shipping, and a factory-trained team of controls experts to answer your questions, Stromquist & Company continues in its tradition of offering great service and great products. If you need to control it or measure it, Stromquist & Company has a control solution for you.